are we now? So many people affected. They see the changes happening out their window and want to understand why is this happening? To answer that question, one veteran reporter in Charleston, South Carolina, who witnessed increased flooding on his city's coastlines, decided to travel thousands of miles to find out why. It's helpful to understand where I live to help uh, understand why it was so important for us to connect the dots. Charleston, South Carolina is in the low country that is, for the most part, is just a few feet above sea level. So every inch of sea rise makes a big difference here. At one point, we saw about an inch of sea rise a decade. Then we began to see an acceleration of that sea rise. So now we're at a rate of 3.2 inches per decade. And then it keeps going up. Once upon a time, it flooded at high tide in Charleston, maybe once every year or two. Now it happens 50 to 80 to 90 times a year. To help explain these rising tides to his readers, Tony Bartolme had a destination in mind, far from their Charleston home, Greenland. We had this kind of simple idea about a very complex project, and that was simply to go watch the ice melt. I'll never forget getting out of the plane, getting into a taxi and going down to town and seeing the icebergs off in the distance. And it was really emotional thing for me to see because of the sheer scale of what was before me. It began to give me an idea of really just the enormous forces that are taking place on our planet and how not many people get to see that. With photographer Lauren Petraca, the team landed in a small town where one of the largest glaciers on the planet is toppling into the sea. We spent a lot of time in this town called Ilulissat. It has the biggest receiving glacier. And that's uh, where the Greenland ice sheet flows into the ocean. So we knew we wanted to go there because that is where the most visual ice melt is happening and where you can see these giant icebergs breaking off the ice sheet. creates the most beautiful traffic jam in the world. Giant icebergs for 30 or 40 miles flowing out to sea. The reporting team arranged to meet a group from NASA studying the ice melt. NASA's lead scientist, Climate Elvis. You take a bunch of weather and you average it together and you're doing the climate right. Years ago, I started, these sideburns started getting a little longer and longer, and uh, somebody somebody called me Climate Elvis, and, and it sort of stuck. He, like a lot of journalists, struggle with how to tell the climate story to regular people in a, in a compelling way. So he's using humor as his route. Oh, yeah. According to Josh Willis, Greenland is currently the single largest source of sea level rise. The ice there could raise global sea levels by almost 25 feet if it all melted today. Greenland is about the size of Mexico or three times the size of Texas and 80% of that island is covered in ice. To better understand the forces at play, the team headed deep into glacier territory aboard a plane that was 80 years old. Well, you know, if you're going slow, you can turn a little tighter. That's important for getting in and out of small places and, and getting access to these little areas in, in the ice that were important to us. We flew with them um, in this old plane from the 1930s. It was the scariest flight of my life. I already don't like flying. We had a really great team flying these planes around. Uh, plus, we looked like we were in an Indiana Jones movie. Those old DC-3s were key for Josh's mission, flying low and slow, trying to pinpoint small patches of water in the ice a small bullseye in a field of white. And so you're flying around in them looking for a little patch of open water. And when you see one, then you have to carefully fly around it. Three, two, one, drop. Drop the probe at exactly the right time so it hits that open spot in the water. One piece stayed at the surface and it radios data back to the airplane. And the other piece falls down through the water and it measures the ocean conditions as it goes. After six years of missions, one of the many discoveries was that Greenland's waters are what Josh calls upside down. Normally, the warm water's at the top because warm water tends to be lighter. But in Greenland, the warm water comes from the Atlantic Ocean, which is the saltiest ocean on the planet. 
And the cold water comes from the Arctic, which is the freshest ocean on the planet. And so that difference in saltiness actually makes the warm water heavier. Their discovery was the temperature of the ocean has a dramatic effect on the ice sheet of, of Greenland. And then you have a, a greater amount of ice falling into the ocean, and that all plays into the idea of rising seas. Almost every time we made a discovery, we found out that the oceans were more important than we thought. And what that literally means is that we have to raise the bar on our predictions of sea level rise. They're gonna be higher than we expected. Josh's team is now working to come up with new predictions for sea level rise in the decades ahead to help the world prepare. It's sometimes a little disorienting for people, I think, to realize that what's going on so far away has this impact on your own doorstep. Um, but every ton of ice that's lost from Greenland raises sea levels in South Carolina just a little bit. And uh, the same is true all over the planet. Every foot of sea level rise is hundreds of millions of more people affected. And for Tony and Lauren, their trip to Greenland was transformative. I felt just very privileged to see a place of just enormous beauty and wonder. My trip to Greenland was, you know, it was life-changing. I just fell in love with the place. My aim was to show the, the visual connections between the two places. So I have a picture of, you know, an iconic bridge in Charleston at sunset with the same sunset over an iceberg in Greenland. There's another photograph that shows the big iceberg that's broken off from the ice sheet. And then there's a photograph that shows this tree that's outside of Charleston where this beach has been eroded by rising seas and these trees are just falling into the water. So I really wanted to show you know, kind of cause and effect as well as similarities to make people feel connected to the other place. And it was also just proof to me of, you know, how fast this is happening and the urgency that we have to act and the importance of telling these stories.